this video, we'll do a couple of examples of pipe flow with both major and minor losses. Here's the governing equations that we are working with, looking at a Bernoulli equation augmented by the term for the losses, which we can express either in terms of Pascal's energy per unit volume or in terms of head or units of meters. And we're going to take into account in this case both the major and the minor losses. The major losses given by the friction factors for the fully developed flow in our straight piping sections and the minor losses due to those additions to our piping system, the fittings, the elbows, the valves, and what, what have you on the piping system. So here's the problem I'm going to look at. And first we're going to do the type 1 problem, or the simple, the straightforward direct solve of a problem, solve for the delta P given a flow rate. So we have a fully developed pipe flow of water in a 25 meter long drawn tube. So it's the same as before, except now I'm calling it a drawn tube with a diameter of 12.7 millimeters, which is close to half an inch. It's water, so a density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and a viscosity of 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3 pascal seconds. The tube enters and exits at the same elevation, and includes four elbows. I'm giving the loss factor for each elbow is 0 0.3, and it has one gate valve, and I'm giving a loss factor for the gate valve of 10. And the question is to calculate delta P for a volume flow rate of 6.3 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed per second. So all of this is the same as in the garden hose example, except now we're talking about a drawn tube. It's not smooth. We'll have to look up uh, the roughness for a drawn tube. And we have to include our loss factors. So starting with our governing equation with the gen generic uh, HL, the head loss, which includes both the major and the minor. Uh, because the flow is entering and exiting the pipe of the same diameter, the velocities will cancel out and the kinetic energy terms will go away. We are told that the tube enters and exits at the same elevation, which is telling us that the Z1 and the Z2 terms will cancel out. And so what we're left with is the P1 minus P2 is equal to rho g times the head loss. And we can expand that head loss in terms of 1 half rho v squared times the major losses, friction factor times the ratio of length of the pipe over the diameter to the um, sum of all the minor losses. And just to get a feel for what this piping system looks like, we're entering and exiting at the same point. So perhaps we start at a point one, we come across an elbow, we go up, we hit another elbow, here we hit a gate valve, come across Hit another elbow, come down, another elbow, and carry on. So it might look something like this. This would be our station two. And the total length of all the piping systems is given as 25 meters. So all these straight sections would add up to 25 meters. We have one, two, three, four elbows, and one gate valve. So let's begin to solve the problem. Uh, the first step, as exactly as in the previous example without the minor losses, uh, we need to calculate the velocity from our volume flow rate, and we see that as before, nothing has changed. That's 4.97 meters uh, per second. We can then calculate the Reynolds numbers again. Reynolds number, again, exactly as before. Uh, it gives us 5.74 times 10 to the 4. And now we need to look up the roughness for a drawn tube. And when I look up the roughness for a drawn tube from my sources, um, you should get the same value if you look it up, um, or you can use this value in your future work for a drawn tube, is 0 0.0015, and that will be given in units of millimeters. So when I calculate the relative roughness ratio, I have to make sure I use my diameter in millimeters as well. So this is a non-dimensional ratio. I have to have the units cancelling out 0 0.0015 millimeters divided by 12.7 millimeters is a relative roughness ratio of 1.18 times 10 to the minus 4. And so I can look up uh, however I want to do it, plugging into the formulas, looking it up off the Moody diagram, uh, or using the function that you can implement in either uh, Jupyter Notebook or MATLAB or whatever software you wish to use. And looking at the friction factor for a Reynolds number of 5.74 times 10 to the 4 and a relative roughness of 1.18 times 10 to the minus 4 gives me a value of 0 0.02074. Great. Once we have that, we can summarize that again up here, and we can look at, we need to look at what our minor losses are. In this case, I'm going to assume nothing was said about what kind of entry we have, and I'm just going to assume uh, that we're, in this case, that we're not going to consider the exit. And so as long as I've stated that's my assumption, and there's no information here that's giving me another, uh, that's telling me I should be doing it differently, 
then we're safe to do that. And so my total minor losses then are going to be four of the elbows at a 0 0.3. It's given a 0 0.3 and there are four of them. And one gate valve with a KL of 10. The total is going to be 11.2. Now I can directly solve my P1 minus 2 or the pressure drop across the pipe. Um, as I know, I've solved now for the velocity. I know the density. I've solved my friction factor. I know my L over D ratio. And now I know the sum of my minor losses. And if I plug that in, I get a value of 6.4 times 10 to the 5 pascals. If you remember from before, we did the exact same problem without the minor losses and with a smooth pipe instead of this small roughness, which is relatively small. Uh, we had 4 times 10 to the 5 pascals. So we have a reasonably significant increase in the pressure drop, mostly due to these minor losses and a little bit due to the fact that the pipe has a little bit of roughness on it now. Now, of course, I did this in my Jupyter Notebook. You can see what I typed into my Jupyter Notebook here. I'm using that friction factor function that I mentioned before. And here you can see the actual values that I calculated. But in addition, when I did this, I added a calculation of what the percentage of the losses was due to the major losses or the friction in the pipe and how much was due to the minor losses or those fittings, the four elbows and the gate valve. And we can see that in this example, almost 78.5% of the losses are due to the friction in the, in the straight sections of the pipe, while 21.5% are due to the minor losses. So there's an example where we have a known flow rate and we calculate the pressure drop. Next, and as before, I'm going to look at an example where we're given the pressure drop across the pipe and we need to calculate the flow rate. When we do that, we're again going to be in a situation where we have to iterate. So this question is an identical question uh, as for the setup, the size of the pipes, the number of the fittings, the parameters for all of the uh, fittings, except now we're given the pressure drop is 4 bars or 4 times 10 to the 5 pascals as it was in the previous example without the, in the example that we did in another video, uh, without the fittings. And so the only addition, of course, as before, the velocity is constant through our same diameter section, so the, the kinetic energy term cancels out. The elevation change is, we are told that it is, enters and exits at the same elevation, and so the potential energy term cancels out, and we're left with the same expression we had uh, previously here for the pressure drop across the pipe. Now, we can't solve this directly because I don't know what this velocity is. I need to solve for the flow rate in order to know this velocity. So what I do, as before, is to rearrange this equation for V. And I find that V, I have a very similar looking expression to what I had before, except I've added this term down here for the sum of the minor losses. I've written it slightly different before, but it was exactly the same. This is the only addition to that equation uh, that we have. And so now we can go about iterating that. I can create a table as I did before. We're going to start. Now the only difference, we're using the relative roughness that we have for this particular problem, but I'm going to start with a very high Reynolds number. I'm going to estimate a friction factor based on a, flow, a Reynolds number of 10 million at my given roughness ratio. That gives me this value from which I can now calculate the velocity in C4.723, from which I can calculate the Reynolds number, and then I can iterate. Put that Reynolds number in with the same roughness ratio, new value of f, put that into here to get a new value of v. With the new value of v, I calculate a new rounds number, and I continue likewise until I get convergence. And in this case, I get convergence again, or very close convergence to a tolerance that I'm happy with after five iterations, which gives me a velocity of 3.84 meters per second, and from that I can calculate the volume flow rate of 4.9 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed per second. If you were to go back to the previous video and see the flow rate that we had when we didn't have the minor losses and the roughness, you'd see that it was a fair bit higher than this. It was uh, 5.4 or 5.5 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters per second. So a significant decrease in that flow rate when the pressure is held fixed and we add additional losses because of these elbows and the gate valve and a little bit of extra friction in the pipe because of the roughness. And of course, I've implemented this in the Jupyter Notebook function. It's even easier than before. In a subsequent video, I will explain this function and make it the most generic function I can. But I'm using this function that I've called pipe flow, where I've put in all of these parameters for this problem, my sum of the delta k's, uh, my epsilon, which is the way I handed it into this function, in order to get my relative roughness. And then it is going through and doing this iterating for me. And I have also things in there where I can change the, the tolerance for convergence or 
a maximum number of iterations so I don't do this ad infinitum. And we can see exactly the numbers that I've put in the table in the previous slide and uh, to more precision what the estimate for the, the flow rate is and those velocities. So that's how we solve for a pipe flow in a single pipe with a single diameter with both major and minor losses. And we'll continue with some more complicated examples where we have changes in diameter in the pipe as well in a subsequent video.